Hi, and welcome to The Curling Show, the podcast that brings you interviews with the sports top athletes and the people who shape the game. I'm Dean Gemmel, and I want to remind everyone that the Great Power World Cup of Curling, an event that, on paper, has about the strongest field of Canadian and international teams that you'll see this year, gets underway this Wednesday night at the Hershey Centre in Mississauga. If you can get there, you should. And if you haven't picked up a copy of Fit to Curl, a sports-specific guide to training for the world's greatest game by John Morris with, yes, me, Dean Gemmel, you can also do that in Mississauga by visiting the Gold Line booth. We'll have at least one book signing with John during the event, so look for information about that when you're at the Hershey Center. With that, it's time for our interview with a player who not only punched his ticket to the Grey Power World Cup of Curling last week, but also earned a trip to Vancouver for the 2010 Games. The lead on the team that will represent Switzerland at the 2010 Olympics, Simon Strubin, welcome to the Curling Show. Thanks for having me on. You know, it was an interesting thing to follow. Uh, mainly I followed it on uh, curlnews.blogspot.com, although I know it was uh, some of the uh, games were available online, but you played a, a best-of-seven series against Ste- Stefan Carnusian uh, to decide yes. who goes to, uh, to, to 2010 in Vancouver. Uh, how did how did that uh, matchup come together? I mean, why was why is it your two teams playing in this best of seven playoff? Oh, it's a, it was actually a pretty long process. It was a four year process uh, leading up to to those trials. Um, you you qualify to the trials um, uh, if you if you won the Swiss championship or or uh, uh, we we held every year we held trials uh, for the European championship as well. And if you win that. Um, then you were uh, eligible to to play in the trials as well, and then uh, if you won those events, the Swiss Championship or the European uh, trials that we had in Switzerland, uh, you you had to um, you had to uh, achieve certain goals at the at the World Championship level or at the at the Europeans as well in order to to keep your spot. And uh, additionally, you had to be in the top uh, eight teams of the Swiss National League every year. Which um, in the end, you know that that cost actually two teams their their spot at the trials. Uh, uh, Claudio Pecha and the guys, when they won the Swiss uh, the Championship, they they finished 11th at the at the Worlds. Which, uh, which after that, they they lost the trial spot. And uh, another team uh, who was qualified for the for the trials, um, they finished last year, I think, in 10th spot at the at the Swiss National Championship. So uh, they they lost their trial spot there. So in the end, it was Stefan and, and our team who, who were uh, battling out at the, the, um, in this in this best of seven series. So, how many teams do you really think? Uh, you know, over the last four teams, how many Swiss teams had a legitimate shot at this? <laughs> That's difficult to answer. Well, I I would say <laughs> maybe four or five teams were, sure. were in the running there. Yeah, okay. probably probably like that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you guys, uh, you, you win this last week, and and um, if you'd lost, uh, I guess uh, Stefan's team would be going to Mississauga. But now you're not, uh, and now now he's not, and you are. Uh, yeah. is, is that yeah. really what what was in play there too? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, from you know all the funding that comes with it, uh, all the the. Um, I mean, you know, we 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 were not sure what what the rest of the our curling season uh, might look like uh, just just um now we are now we more or less are sure i mean we we know that uh, that we go now uh, to canada on monday we fly out to to mississauga for the for the world cup of curling and play another uh, three bond spiel or another two bond spiels then in uh, in calgary um and and we come back home uh, to switzerland and and we will play the, the Europe, european championship for sure uh, where we actually have to to get a medal to be 100% sure that that this uh, four players and then our team will be the rep at uh, at uh, vancouver if we don't uh, if we don't medal they uh, they have the, the option of, of switching players which really? uh, i mean everybody well everybody who knows a little bit about curling knows that that might not be the best idea but uh, you know i mean that's that's how it's set up and, but the uh, powers that be could still do that they, you guys have a mediocre performance of the europeans and they could still say uh you know marcus yeah, you're out and somebody else is in or what exactly exactly wow. that's how it is yeah yeah good gosh that's some power for the uh, powers to be in uh, in swiss curling but yeah uh, yeah yeah, I mean, you know, they, they they give you a lot of money and and stuff, so I guess they're actually entitled to do stuff like that. I mean, that's that's just how it works. The money talks, does it? Exactly. Yeah. 
Hey, uh, Russ Howard coached uh, this rink last year at the World Championships yeah. in Moncton, and uh, this year you've got Thomas Lips, uh, Swiss native in that role, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. What happened to Russ? Well, I mean, it, it was a perfect fit for us and uh, and for, for Russ as well, I guess. Uh, I mean, the, the world in Moncton is in his uh, new hometown now. Uh, it, it was just perfect. Uh, we, we profited a lot uh, from, from his input. It was, uh, it was great working with him. Um, and then, you know, like TSN came up and, and uh, gave him a very... Uh, well, we, we would have loved to, to continue to work with him, but TSN stepped up and um, I wanted to sign him for the trials, I guess, uh, for the Canadian trials and, and for, the, um, for the Olympics as well. So, I mean, we, we, we cannot financially compete with TSN. Uh, so, so, I mean, he had to take that job. And, and I think it's, it's very good for, for Canadian curling as well. I mean, if he, if he um, gets uh, involved in commentary and stuff, that, that just helps uh, tremendously. I mean, uh, all the young guys who are out there, uh, they, they just have to listen to him, uh, what, what he's saying, and, and you, will, you will really learn the, the game of curling uh, through, through his voice there. Well, I'd agree with that. I think Russ uh, did a nice turn uh, in his. In his uh, he's done a nice turn in his in his start as a as a commentator. And I think he'll only get better as an analyst uh, this year and, and over the years to come. Um, that said, the the Moncton Worlds were a bit of a roller coaster for you guys. Uh, what was going on? Well, yeah, we we, uh, we switched on on a skip position. I think halfway through the tournament, uh, Ralph didn't, just didn't feel felt comfortable anymore. Uh, having all the, the responsibility on his shoulders, and uh, I think he was at that time pretty happy to uh, to actually give the, the skipping role to to Marcus. I mean, we're we're fortunate enough to to have Marcus uh, in our team. I mean, uh, he's he's, uh, he's missed the curling in Switzerland more or less um, since uh, pff, uh, I don't know he played the, the two, I, I think he played at the Tuny Works against Kevin Martin back in 1986 or something. Yeah, he's been um, around it seems for decades. He's the uh, yeah, first guy yeah, who never and, leaves. Uh, Definitely. So, I mean, we're, we're very fortunate to have him on the team and, and have this uh, have this option. And uh, well, I guess we we uh, we went back to to play a little more conservative uh, with with Marcus Kipping, but um, you know it it worked great. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, in the last game um, for the medal, uh, Thomas Ulsrud and the Norwegian guy actually beat us there. Um, so, yeah, we we came up short in the end uh, to to actually get that medal. That that was a little disappointing, of course. But uh, you know. But uh, I definitely kept us going to to uh, to the summer and uh, yeah. But but the lineup now has has Marcus throwing second stone and but holding the brush when uh, Ralph throws, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We we went back to to Ralph skipping and uh, and um, uh, Marcus is uh, wife skipping. Yeah. yeah. What was this final best of seven like? It it, look, it was played in a curling club, <laughs> I, I, I guess, and it, it yeah. looks like there was there weren't spectators out on the ice or anything, though, were they? It's sort of a no, there were no, no spectators on the ice. Uh, it's, it was played in the Basel rink in Arlesheim, our home rink actually from our uh, home curling club. Um, they, they have fans there, but but they're not on the ice, so so we had you know the morning games were. were I mean, was really less or not good attended, but uh, the evening or the afternoon games were pretty good. And I mean, the, I, I I don't know if if you wrote it, but uh, I mean, it was such a hilarious scene uh, when we played the fifth game. Um, actually, I heard this. A guy came uh, out because he wanted to throw some yeah, practice rocks a couple yeah, sheets over. He right? wanted to play practice rocks. Uh, I, I think it was midway through the seventh band or something. Uh, he came up and the umpire had to stop him and, and he was like, oh, nobody told me that uh, that I can uh, go on the ice and the ice is free, so what the hell, I can practice here. And uh, Well, yeah, we both teams, we had a pretty good laugh about that. Yeah. <laughs> By all means, sir, throw some practice rocks. I think that's what you should have said to him. Yeah, but, uh... yeah pro- probably was the first time for him on the, on the, on the ice rink. Anyway. Probably sort of eerie, though, right? Playing for uh, an Olympic spot in, in, in a... In a, in a empty curling club i always find like mm-hmm. when you're playing in a in a bond spiel final or something and all the other teams leave it's a little it's a little yeah. odd out there all of a sudden and you're playing like a yeah. best of seven series that way yeah and always the same opponent yeah it's um, it's pretty special i tell you i mean uh <laughs> i would love to see other teams do that uh just to, to get that experience i mean we, we for touring we played a best of five uh, series against uh, andy schwaller's team and um, yeah, it's it's just uh, how it is, and, and uh, it's it's pretty special, definitely. Yeah. Hey, tell me how a guy from Switzerland uh, comes to the game. Uh, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you get involved in curling? 
parents uh, in my my case of course I, I grew up in Gokhausen, Switzerland which is, which is a pretty small place outside of Zurich and uh, actually a curling hotspot uh, we, we had the, the Ettinger brothers I don't know if, uh, if that rings the bell for you too uh, they, they were a very dominant Swiss team back in the 70s uh, 80s and uh, if you if you grow up in in Gokhausen, you you just um, automatically you you went once or twice to to curl. It was more or less in the school program, and uh, I so uh, somehow I I stick to it. And, yeah. Hey, what about the state of the game in Switzerland right now? Uh, is it is it growing? Is it is it is it is it sort of the same as it's always been in terms of numbers, or or where is it at? I guess it's um, how do you say that? It's um, more or less the same since um, since. since I mean, 1998, when uh, Patrick Kuhlman uh, won the Olympics, I guess it, it peaked, and and after that, like like it's pretty stable, from about uh, 10 to 12,000 people playing uh, curling. Um, we have more um, competitively. We we have maybe around 20 men teams, and uh, maybe yeah, maybe 10 ladies teams. I I don't know exactly about the ladies teams there, but around that, and it's 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 I guess. Pretty good. I mean, we we have uh, four or five teams, as I said uh, before, who are I mean, who are absolutely capable of, uh, of winning the Swiss championship, and uh, yeah, that's that's how it is right now. What what sort of feelings do you have when you play an event in Canada? I mean, I know uh, European teams love to play in Canada because of the crowds and everything else, but is it a bit a, a mix of, of jealousy and also some relief that you don't have to maybe go through what 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 those teams have to do to win? Yeah, well, you know, for us. Going to Canada is, is, is about uh, getting better. I mean, um, we, we just don't have the level of competition uh, generally uh, in, in our bond spiels here that the, the competition level that you have in Canada. So, so in order to get better and, and um, you, you have to play the best, and the best are in Canada. So, so we have to come over. It's, it's, I guess it's not much jealousy. It's, uh, it's. I mean, it's, it's fun when you come over and and um, and see that. Uh, of course, we would love to grow the, the game here in, in Europe as well to that level. But it's. I mean, we're we're competing with so many winter sports, especially Switzerland. I mean, we have alpine skiing, cross country skiing, all that stuff. Um, it's it's really hard to, to yeah to to come out of the of the niche segment of of, uh, of sports and and. Uh, yeah, we, we just have it all four years at the Olympics, basically. What do you What do you think about the uh, the gap? I mean, I think most people realize that the gap between the uh, the top European and the top international teams now, if you, you start to include China and, uh, and mm-hmm. Japan on the women's side, you, um, the gap between those the top teams in those countries and the Canadian top teams is certainly narrowed. Uh, mm-hmm. What about when you go down? I mean, when you go down, I mean, like you're saying, you've got maybe five teams that have a shot. Uh, yeah, it's. It, I get, probably it's it's uh, the same thing that's happening in in Canada. I, I guess you have uh, four or five teams who are probably separating themselves, and you have uh, um, Ross, uh, you have uh, Glenn Howard and, and Kevin Martin are probably above everybody else a little bit, you know, in, in Canada, and and that's probably the same thing that's happening in Switzerland or or in Europe as well. I mean, uh, David Murdoch, Thomas Wilson, they they have to be considered the, the top two teams right now in in Europe, and everybody else is just yeah, I'm trying to to get to their level here, so it's, it's pretty similar, I guess. Yeah. I think what's interesting this year, uh, across the board, not only in Canada, but when you look at some of the European results, uh, uh, I think there's more parity all of a sudden this year has jumped out. I mean, you've you got a guy like Bob Ursel, who's uh, certainly mm-hmm. never to be mm-hmm. underestimated, but all of a sudden they're winning uh, winning events uh, when Glenn and Kevin are in events, uh, and then over. Yeah. Uh, in European events, you know, we've seen David Murdoch turn in a couple of uh, less than so-so performances. Yeah, yeah, but I guess that has a lot to do with uh, how they're scheduling or how they they approach their season. You, you know, you're probably um, right because those teams, yeah. you know, they have they yeah, have I some mean, distinct David, events David in mind. Is, yeah, he has to be at at the top at the Olympics or, or at the Europeans uh, because they're in his home home uh, country in Scotland. So. They're, they're just planning their, their season differently, I guess. And, and Murdoch is typically a slow start. I mean, last year he didn't win an event until the Worlds, the, uh, yeah, the Europeans. Yeah. I mean, he says they build for the Europeans and the Worlds. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Simon, we finished with the run back. I give you a topic. Yeah. You give me your thoughts in one to three words. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Um, Swiss chocolate versus the Hershey brand you're going to find at the uh, Great Power World Cup of Curling in Mississauga. Not a chance. I mean, come on. 
<laughs> it's with chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta agree there. The, you know, dark chocolate. Uh, yeah, the uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, those Hershey bars aren't gonna do too much for you. But uh, yeah. uh, John Morris. Yeah, great guy, and um, you know, I, I I ordered this pretty early, and uh, you know, I, I had to make sure he can write. You know, but <laughs> oh yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> well, it would have been good, except if he if he'd got a different writer involved, it would have been really yeah, good. Yeah. But, uh, no, uh, great great guy. Yeah. And, and I will say you were one of the first to order Fit to Curl. Uh, by, really? By okay. John Morris. One of the I'm first. So that, yeah. I'm imagining that you're just ripped, and that was a key key factor in your <laughs> four to for, one. For winning the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely a factor. You can tell Ralph he owes me for that, for your stellar play <laughs> during the event. Um, the recent agreement between UBS and the United States government that reveals banking records of UBS clients. Ooh, that's a difficult one. Wow. I, I actually used to work for UBS. Oh, um, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, difficult, uh, difficult uh, things there, difficult political things. I mean, we, we did some things wrong, I guess, and, well, you know, then you have to clean up the mess behind you. Uh, all right, we'll leave it at that. That's a tough one for one to three words, but, uh, mm, you know, try mm -hmm. to keep it topical. <laughs> Uh, fondue. Yeah. Fondue, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to have one in uh, half an hour. My parents are over, so uh, yeah. I'm That's really true. I'm probably spoiling the fondue right now with this conversation. Yeah. Probably, uh, yeah. You, you're yeah. gonna have, you're gonna have uh, under, you're gonna have cold fondue or something. Yeah, um, that's not good. <laughs> uh, that televised Swiss tour with six N Games. Yeah, too bad it, it came back. Actually, uh, we had they, they, they tried really hard. Sponsorship thing came up in the second year. Uh, I mean, it was totally amazing to play it. Uh, the format was pretty unique, I guess, and uh, but the, mon the money was outstanding. I mean, we, we basically financed our season by it, or through it, yeah. But with that, well, it was good. To, it was good to see you try something different. Um, yeah, I, I would have loved them to have skin the skin format because right. I think the skin format is just perfect. I mean, why why don't you? I mean. You don't have to innovate something new. It's conforming. Would have worked actually perfect, but you know. Yeah, the, the, the whole the six N thing. It seemed a little tricked up actually more than it needed to be probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, the percentage of Swiss citizens who actually carry a Swiss Army knife. Pretty high, I guess. Really, it is high. <laughs> yeah. I just always thought that was just uh, you pawning those off on unsuspecting Americans. No, no, I, I bring you one to Mrs. Dada. All right, don't bring it on the plane, though, my friend, and your carry-on. Yeah. Don't make it. You'll be left behind, yeah. and then you'll probably be dumped from the Olympics, all for that. Um, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Austrian curler. Did he ever curl? Well, he did. Are Austrians curling? Well, they are, yeah. I know. Well, they do a little bit, but apparently yeah. Arnold was uh, was a curler growing up. His father curled in Austria, but I guess maybe uh, no your, way. your parents never never battled him in, a, in anything, did they? Well, I mean... That would have been a good interview for you guys for the book. I mean, well, I mentioned it in the book. I mentioned it in the book, but okay. unfortunately, uh, you know, my uh, my outreach to uh, to the to the governor of California there, I haven't resulted in an interview on the curling <laughs> show yet. But I'm sure I'm sure he's very keen to come on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and finally, the demand for fit to curl by John Morris with Dean Gemmel among Swiss curlers. I guess it's growing. I hope it's growing after that interview, actually, because uh, I, I think, I mean, I, I haven't read it, the whole book, but uh, just, uh, I, I... Simon, I it's not a long book. It. Pardon me? It's not a long book, Simon. I think you can get through it. I know. Yeah, I, I just watched the, the, the pictures, actually. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you've been too busy. You've been too busy winning games to go to the Olympics to actually yeah, look at but, it. But, but it, makes, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, honestly. I, I, um, I think it's... it's a uh, very good book. It's, it's very good that it came out because, uh, um, yeah, I mean, our our sport is is changing. It, it gets gets more more physical, and uh, it just makes sense uh, to to um, yeah uh, to get involved in fitness programs uh, because otherwise, uh, these days you just have no chance to to compete uh, on the on the top level. So it's definitely definitely something uh, everybody in Switzerland should actually. Read. Well, on a per capita basis, uh, Switzerland is 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 outperforming all other countries in terms of sales. But uh, oh, really? <laughs> oh yeah, more sales per cap. I mean, I don't. How many curlers are in Switzerland? Yeah, t ten to ten thousand, I guess, something right. like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, we've sold books to almost all of them, I think. So. Okay. Not okay. quite, but actually, we, <laughs> we orders have been hot from Switzerland, so it's been nice to see. That's great. That's great to hear. Yeah. Hey Simon, uh, I know you listen to the show a little bit. I always give everybody a chance to name their to name their sponsors. Uh, so if you'd like to take a stab at that, go ahead. I guess the Swiss government is one for now. But uh, yeah, Swiss, 
Atlas Olympic is, uh, is definitely our, our uh, main sponsor, our uh, Antifrist Curling uh, Association. Uh, we have a long-term relationship with uh, Hochschild Cof- Coffee, a coffee brand from, from Switzerland who's uh, supporting us. Uh, we, we are, we are um, the equipment from Goldline, uh, H2O clothing, and uh, Kandahar for uh, for the shoes as well. And, um, who else there? No, yeah. Wait, what Our kind of shoes stuff. do you guys wear? Um, Marcus. Marcus has Kandahar shoes. I actually wear my custom customized Nike shoes. But, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I will say yeah, the European yeah. teams, you always have some interesting shoes in the lineup. So, so Mark, Kandahar shoes, do they, are they making curling shoes? Or are they, uh... Yeah, they're a Swiss brand, yeah. Oh, really? He, yeah, Mark actually had quite some troubles uh, when he played at the Salt Lake Olympics uh, with his Kandahar shoes because Kandahar apparently is a, is a mountain uh, chain in, in Pakistan or something. So yeah. They, yeah, they, they, did, they didn't like it. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> topical, actually, yeah. Hey, uh, do you know? Can you do you know anything about why? Why did Bali used to make shoes? Was it just some executive at that shoe company uh, was into well, curling? Bali, Bali went went bankrupt a couple of years ago. Right, uh, but they made that shoe uh, for years that a lot of top players uh, wore through the eighties and early nineties. They're still around. I, I don't know um, that there are still a couple of them are, are around, but I, I don't know exactly uh, who's producing them or no idea there. No. Yeah, look at the old video though. If you see Russ and the Briar and, and uh, in the '80s and '90s, they were all wearing that Bally shoe. Bally shoes, yeah. yeah, they okay. were. In, in, I, but if you went into a store that sold Bally shoes in, in Canada, they'd look at you like you had three heads when you asked for the curling shoes. You had to get mm-hmm. them. So, mm-hmm. all yeah. right. Well, there you go. Uh, that's off topic. But uh, hey, Simon, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. Good luck. Uh, I think I'll see you uh, next week uh, in Mississauga at the Great Power World Cup of Curling. Should be a great event. Part of the Capital One Grand Slam series, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. You got a busy schedule, Eddie. You know. Yes, we do. Thanks a lot, Dean. That's Simon Strubin on the Curling Show. I'll be at the Grey Power World Cup of Curling this week, and I hope that a lot of curling fans will be there too. It's not only a great chance to see an incredible group of curlers; it's a fine opportunity to pick up a copy of Fit to Curl, perhaps even one that's autographed by John Morris during a book signing at the Gold Line booth at the Hershey Center. Thanks for listening. Here's the band that rocks every edition of this show and now has their music in the iTunes store, Black Pudding. (laughs) 